in the dark shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read ancient tomes, the older order abracast. We are the brave and bold. The Abercast. Occult. History. Conspiracy. Violence. Welcome to the Abercast. <clears throat> I'm your homeboy, your home slice, your home skillet, John Towers. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for all the support. And thank you for lending me this hour or maybe two a week to babble at you about things that I enjoy, things that are mysterious, <laughs> things that are, quite frankly, crazy sometimes <laughs> um before we get rolling i'd like to you know on that note on a note of thanks i would like to uh um give you a laurel and hearty handshake and ask you guys to go ahead and ra- <laughs> um <laughs> does anyone know what that joke's from the laurel and hearty handshake go ahead put your guesses in um uh, I would like to ask you guys to rate and review on iTunes, and I'd like to ask you guys to check out the website, stigmatastudios.com or abercast.com. There's some fun stuff to be had there. Uh, you can find the feature topic link uh, if you enjoy this topic and want to know what else we've talked about that links up to it. Also, there's social media links at the bottom. So if you know what the Laurel and Hardy handshake is from, Find me on Twitter or Facebook or something and let me know if you get the joke and if you appreciate it. Uh, one uh, or another thing is the mailing list. <clears throat> um, I'd like to encourage everyone to check out the, the mailing list. And it's not to get newsletters or whatever. I don't really abuse my mailing list like that, and I don't share your information with anybody. Um, but one of the things that does happen when you sign into the mailing list is you get a link to a secret part of my website that has what I've been calling the plan, which is uploaded PDF files of uh, certain selected episodes. And these tarot episodes are what this whole thing is about. Um, we're not breaking down images of the cards just yet, but, uh, especially in this episode, there's a lot of, uh, numerology that in the past, before I had this thing set up, I would just have to skip through it all. Um, but now since I have this way of sharing these images in the ways of like these, uh, numerological, um, breakdowns and stuff it's uh, another dimension that you can get from the podcast right so in the first tarot card episode there was a few i think we got up to figure c so we're just going to launch right on from that so while i'm going through this episode if i go and that's figure d uh if you're interested in what i'm talking about you just go sign in or if you've already signed up to the newsletter then you just go back to that link that's provided and you could go and download episodes or you could download those uh, those plans um, right there. And they're just they're clean PDF files. That's all. Uh, but they are they are scanned right in from my notebook. So if there is any spelling errors or rambling gibberish or weird um, abbreviations, please forgive me uh, of all that. Um, and the last thing is Patreon. The 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 plans also get put on Patreon for anyone that's a that uh, one dollar and up. 
<laughs> but another cool thing about Patreon is besides the jar, besides the mason jars, besides the bookmarks, I'm going to get the temporary tattoos up there very soon. But besides all of that stuff, there's tons of just super exclusive bonus content. I think I counted the other day and we were up to like 13 episodes just in the last three months of exclusive Patreon stuff. So I'm not going to belabor the point here. Uh, you can go check it out if you want to. There's, but there's a lot of great stuff. The Emerald tablets of Thoth, uh, the first part of Aleister Crowley's, uh, Liber Abba, or it's also known as Liber four or just magic. It's the whole section on mysticism, um, is, is up there. There's five episodes on that one. There's six episodes on Toth. And then this month we did, uh, four episodes on, we're starting our sex magic shtick. We're starting our sex magic thread. And we started with a, a book called influence of the phallic idea in the religions of antiquity. So there's five, sorry, four bonus episodes just on that up there now. So like I said, there's a lot. Um, so, uh, would like you to come on board <laughs> and like with always everything on Patreon, uh, a part of everything I get from Patreon or donations or even just the ad revenue from the, from this regular stream, uh, a portion of all that goes to Tomes for Troopers, which is like my little program where I, uh, um, send, we donate, uh, books to soldiers who are, um, overseas, they're stationed overseas. And I joke, I, it's not really a joke, <laughs> but I say it sometimes because, uh, I know what it's like to watch the same fucking movie every waking moment of your life for two weeks. Uh, in my case, I'm lucky it was a good movie. We had a video, we had a VHS tape of the adventures of Ford Fairlane. So there is my love of Ford Fairlane and why I never pass up a Zambuca milkshake. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get into uh uh we're going to get into the this is this episode is this the tarot part 2. And like I said, we're still not even getting into the actual cards proper. We're just talking about <laughs> the system of it. Uh, uh if you haven't listened to the first part, I strongly suggest that you do uh cuz you're going to we're just we're going to jump right in here with some weird nonsense. And this isn't like I hate, like, I don't want to belittle anybody or whatever, but this isn't like, and then you turn the cards over and it tells you stuff. Okay. Like we're talking, we're actually starting this evening off in uh kind of like a dive into Kabbalah and the secret word, the secret name of one of the secret names of God. <clears throat> so uh, all this stuff is very important. And as a, this is the last time I'm going to mention it until the end, but you know, if you're uh, curious about these uh, figures and the, these number breakdowns and stuff, I'm going to be referring to, please just go ahead and sign into the newsletter. There's links in the show notes. Also, you can find the link on the website uh, and it'll give you access to this thing where you can go and download these images of what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> So the book we're talking about is called The Tarot of the Bohemians. It was written by a guy named Pappas or a girl. I don't know. Someone named Pappas. His real, their real name is Gerard Incuse, I think. Um, uh, and we're dealing with, uh, let's see the copy. I don't know what the copy is. I have upstairs translated by AP Morton published in 1892. <clears throat> <laughs> like <laughs> so if you sign into the if you sign the newsletter and you could get to the the plan for last episode the tarot one episode uh you'll see my <laughs> this uh really questionable drawing i did of lady gaga on my show notes all right um general okay so this is uh the general key to the tarot giving the absolute key to occult science the sacred word yod hey vo hey the Kabbalah and the secret word, the Yod, the He, and the Vo. The second He is a synthesis, the sacred word. According to the ancient oral traditions of the Hebrews or Kabbalah, a sacred word exists, which gives 
uh, to the mortal who can discover the correct way of pronouncing it, the key to all the sciences, divine and human. This word, which the Israel Israelites never uttered, and which the high priest pronounced once a year amidst the shouts of the laity, is found at the head of every in- initiative ritual. It radiates from the center of the flaming triangle at the 33rd degree of Freemasonry of Scotland. And it is displayed above the gateway of our old cathedrals, is formed the four Hebrew letters and reads Yad He Vau He. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you haven't already, grab your jars, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it is used in the Sefer Bereshit, or the Genesis of Moses, to designate the divinity. And grammatical construction recalls, even by its formation, the attributes which men have always delighted to ascribe to God. Now we shall see that the powers attributed to this word are real up to a certain point, for with its aid, the symbolic gate of the arch, which contains the explanation of the whole doctrine of ancient science, is easily opened. It is therefore necessary to enter into some detail respecting it. The word is formed of four letters, Yod. This this is actually figure C from the last episode, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna redo it. But we can look at the the Hebrew letters that he's talking about. Yod kind of looks like a comma. Hey, kind of looks like a pi symbol, and Vu kind of looks like a musical note turned upside down. So it's like the big the round part. It's like a Q, kind of. If you fill in the circle of the Q. See, this is why I'm doing the plan. <laughs> so I don't have to describe all this bullshit. <clears throat> At the, uh, the last letter, K, is repeated twice. The number is attributed to each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And we must look at those which relate to these letters we are now considering. Okay, so Yod is the tenth letter. Hey is the fifth letter, and Vu is the sixth letter. So the total numerical value of the word Yod, Hey, Vo, Hey is therefore 10 plus 6, or sorry, 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 equals 26. This will be figure D. <clears throat> Let us now study each letter separately. The Yod. <laughs> the Yod is shaped like a comma or a dot, representing the principle or origin of all things. The other letters of the Hebrew alphabet are all produced by different combinations of the letter Yod. The synthetic study of the nature had led ancients to conclude that one law only existed and ruled all natural productions. This law, the basis of analogy placed in the unity principle at the origin of all things and regarded them as the reflections at various degrees of this unity principle. Thus, Yod, which alone forms all other letters and therefore all the words and all the phrases of the alphabet, was justly used as the image and representation of this unity principle of which the profane had no knowledge. Thus the law which presided over the creation of the Hebrew language is the same law that presided over the creation of the universe. And not only, or sorry, and to know that one is to know the other. Unreservedly, the Sefer Yetzirat, Yetzirah, Yetz, Yetzirah, Yetzirah. One of the most ancient books of the Kabbalah proves this fact. Well, let's not start throwing around this word. <laughs> Before proceeding any further, let us illustrate the definition which we have just given of the Yod. By example, the first letter, letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph. 
is composed of four yods placed opposite each other. And the other letters are formed at the same basis. This will the LF will be figure E. The numerical value of the yod leads to other considerations. The unity principle, according to the doctrine of the Kabbalists, is also the unity end of beings and of things, so that eternity from this point is only an eternal present. The ancients used the dot in the center of the circle as a symbol of this idea. The representation of the unity principle, the dot in the center of eternity, the circle, a line without beginning or end. This one's easy to visualize, but I will include it. It'll be figure F. <clears throat> According to these demonstrations, the unity is regarded as the whole of which all created beings are the only constituent parts. Just as the unity man is formed from an algamoration of molecules which compose his being. The Kabbalah, therefore, places at the origin of all things uh, the absolute assertion of the being by itself. The ego unity, which is represented by the Yod symbolically and by the number 10. This number 10 representing the all principle, one with the zero, nothing, all implies the requisite condition. Uh, we're going to move on to the hay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But the ego cannot be realized except through the opposition of the non-ego. The assertion of the ego is scarcely established <clears throat> when we must instantly realize a reaction of the ego absolute upon itself from which the conception of all of its existence will be drawn by a kind of division of unity and the origin of duality of opposition of the binary the image of femininity even as the unity with its image of the masculine 10 divided by itself in opposition to itself, then equals 10 divided by two equals five. The exact number of the letter. Hey, the second letter of the great sacred name. Then hey, therefore, represents the ma the passive in relation to the yod, which symbolizes the active, the non ego. <clears throat> in relation to the ego, the woman relatively to the man, the substance relatively to the essence of life, and its relation to soul. Now we're moving on to vow. <laughs> But the opposite of ego and the non-ego immediately gives rise to another factor. This is the affinity existing between this ego and this non-ego. Now the vow is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet produced by Yod plus He. Okay, so Yod plus He is 15. And then 1 and 5 is 6. Or one plus five. It, significant, it signifies a link or analogy. It is the link which uh, you, uniting antagonisms to the whole nature constitutes the third word of this mysterious trinity. Ego, non-ego, the affinity of the ego with the non-ego. So this thing where he said, where they do... <clears throat> this thing where he says, Yod is 10, Hey is 5, equals 15, and then 1 plus 5 equals 6. This is common when you're, I, I don't know what the correct word of it is, but it's like when you're boiling, like when you're boiling down these numerical values of letters, uh, this is a common thing to do. And, you know, I look towards, you know, people who know uh, English 
you know, well, this is actually Hebrew gematria. Like this is the gematria. There's also a thing called English gematria where, you know, the people that practice this say that it's just as val it's just it's the magic of it is just as valid as the as the Hebrews. If you're curious about this gematria, um uh, I recommend you look up on YouTube this guy Marty Leeds. Uh, if you haven't heard of him before, he's pretty he's a pretty fascinating um, guy, and he do, he deals with English gematria all the time. Okay, so now we're gonna okay enough of that. But enough fucking about that shit. <laughs> the second hey, so it's yod hey vo hey. Now we're talking about the last hey. We're talking about the hey, hey, hey. Nothing can exist beyond this trinity considered as a law. The trinity is the synthetic and absolute formula to which all science converges. All sciences converge. And this formula, forgotten with regard to its scientific value, has been transmitted to us integrally by all religious by all the religious of the world, the unconscious depositories of the science wisdom of primitive civilizations. Thus is the great sacred name formed of the three letters only. The fourth term of the name is formed by a repetition of the second letter, the hey, the first hey. <laughs> this repetition indicates the passage of the Trinitarian law unto which new applications, that is to speak correctly, a transition from the metaphysical to the physical world, or generally of any world, whatever to the world that immediately follows it. The knowledge of the property of the second hey is the key to the whole divine name. In every application of this which is susceptible, we find, or we shall presently see, the proof of this statement. So before we get into this, I just wanted to say that this reminds me of, you know, the OM, um, OM, you know, when you're, like, meditating, it's your, your mantra or whatever. We kind of talked about this in the Liber Abba uh, exclusive Patreon episodes, um, but the OM, O-M, O-H-M, I guess is how it would be. <clears throat> the, they, it's, a, it's four syllables, and they count the silence at the beginning and at the end as the last, as the last syllable. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of like what, the sort of thing I'm getting with this repeating hey here, hey, hey. Uh, summary upon the word yod hey vo hey. Now that we have separately studied each of the letters that comp that compose the sacred name, we will apply the law of synthesis to them and sum up the results obtained. The word ya hey vo hey is formed of four letters signifying the yod, the active principle preeminent, the ego. It equals 10. The hey, it's the passive principle preeminent. The non-ego, it equals 5. The, the vow, the median letter, the link which unites the active and the passive. The affinity between ego and non-ego, it equals 6. And these letters express the Trinitarian law of the absolute. The second hey, the second hey marks the passage from one world to another. It's the transition. The second hey represents the complete being comprising in one absolute unity, the three letters which compose it, ego, non-ego, and affinity. It indicates the passage from the non now noun menial to the phenomenal the non menial to the phenomenal or reciprocal it serves as a meaning of ascension from one scale to another and here is a representation of the sacred word the word yod hey vo hey can be represented in various ways which are all useful the circle can be drawn this way and that will be figure H. But uh, since the second hey, the sign of transition becomes the active entity of the following scale. 
Since the hay only represents a yod in germ, the sacred word can be presented with the second hay under the first yod, thus. That'll be figure I. <clears throat> Lastly, the third method of representing the word consists of its enveloping trinity, yod, hay, vo, with the tonalizing letter or the second hey thus this will be figure j now we will leave this data in which we must return later on and speak of the occult or pythagorean concept of numbers And to all my brothers and sisters out there who's asking, Pastor Larry Solomon, what do you know about it? What do you know about love? Well, I'm here to tell you, you youngsters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you teenagers, and all of you, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about love. The eternal and everlasting love of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can Jesus Christ get an amen? What you all are talking about isn't love. It's lust. It's the unrighteous lust of the flesh, of the physical a body. You are talking about unclean and unholy thoughts, nakedness and sin, touching those sweated bosoms instead of asking, please, Jesus, forgive my sins. You asking, why? Why can't I get just one kiss? You should be asking for a kiss on the lips from the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, can I get an amen? Instead of asking for the Lord to save your black, a dog, dookie stained soul, you're asking, why? Why can't I get just one screw? You should be thinking about Jesus screwed up on that wooden cross up on Calvary. Instead of asking for eternal life after the death of your broken, your fat body, your filthy body. You're asking why? Why can't I get just one fornication? You boy. You better turn on your TV and watch Face of the Nation. Can I get an amen for learning something? Amen, amen. Learn some current events. And you, you sister, why are you down there going, learn about the influence of the phallic idea and the religions of antiquity? Where do you go to learn about it? I'll tell you where. Three episodes on the $3 tier and a bonus episode on the $5 tier of the Abercast Patreon page. Can I get an amen? Yeah, that's pretty good. Hey, man. Hey, we're letting you guys know what's going on with uh, Tomes for Troopers uh, this month. Uh, we had a... Mm, fuck, we actually had a... We had an Air Force person. We had an airman... Uh, requesting specifically a uh, request respectfully request Dungeons and Dragons rule book. He said that he wanted edition five, but any would do. So we went in, down and we actually tracked down the core rule book and the monster manual fifth edition for him and sent it out and sent it out to him. So uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're, we have done <laughs> uh, with Tomes for Troopers this month. It's a little on the sad side. Sometimes you only get to send one or two books out a month, but right now it's the limitations of the of the support. So, um, if you want to, if you want to help out, 
with Tomes for Troops uh, Patreon. Uh, you can there's a donate link right there in the show notes, and whatever money I get from the ad revenue monthly, a portion of all those things goes to goes towards um, these Tomes Tomes for Troopers. So here we go. Like we've sent out a bunch of stuff. This is the first time we sent out Dungeons and Dragons though, so I'm, pre- I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited about that. <clears throat> Chapter 3. The Esotericism of Numbers. The Theosophic number, Numbers and Operations signific, Signification of the Numbers. <clears throat> the Numbers. The ancients had a conception of numbers, which is almost lost in modern times. The idea of the unity in all in its manifestation leads to the numbers being considered as an expression of absolute law. This led to the veneration expressed for the three or for the four throughout antiquity, which is so incomprehensible to our mathematicians. It is, however, evident that if the ancients had not known how to work on any other problems than those we now use, nothing could have led them to the ideas where we find the current in the Hindu, Egyptian, and Greek universities. What are these operations, then, our savants do not know? There are two kinds, the theosophic reduction and the theosophic addic- addition. These operations are theosophic because they cause the essential laws of nature to penetrate throughout the world. They cannot be included in the science of phenomena, for they tower above it, soaring into the heights of pure intellectuality. They therefore form the basis of the secret and oral instructions confided to a few chosen men under the name of esotericism. Number one, the theosophic reduction. The theosophic reduction consists of reducing all of the numbers formed of two or several figures to the number of a single figure. The single figure that is done by adding together the figures which compose the number until only one remains. So this is kind of what we were just talking about. And I'll go through this, but it'll be in the notes in figure K. Figure K. Example. 10 equals 1 plus 0 equals 1. 11 equals 1 plus 1 equals 2. 12 equals 1 plus 2 equals 3. 126 is equals 1 plus 2 plus 6 equals 9. 2,488 is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 8 equals 22. Equals 2, equals 2 plus 2 equals 4. So he's folding 2,488 into, into 4 using this reductive mas- method, which is just what we were talking about when we were talking about gematria a few minutes ago. The operation corresponds to that which is now called proof by nine, uh, the the, uh, theosophical addition. The addition consists of ascertaining the theosophic value of a number by adding together arithmetically all (laughs) arithmetically all (laughs) the figure. I'm not going to try it again. All the figures from the unity to itself inclusively. Thus, the figure four in theosophical addition equals all the figures from one to four inclusively together. Uh, added together, that is to say, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. The figure 7 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 equals 28, which is 2 plus 8, which equals 10. That'll be figure L. (laughs) <laughs> the osophic reduction and addition are two operations which it is uh, indispensably to know indispensable to know if we would understand the secrets of antiquity let us know how these rules to all numbers <clears throat> that we may discover the law which directs their progression the sea of theos 
Sophic reduction shows us, first of all, that the numbers which may have been reductible in themselves to the first nine since they are brought down to numbers of a single figure. But this consideration is not uh, sufficient to the theosophic addition will now furnish with this new light. Through it, we will find one, four, seven, ten are all equal to one for one equals one four equals one plus two plus three plus four equals ten equals one. Seven is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven equals twenty eight, which equals ten, which equals one and ten equals one. So all the numbers ultimately return to the figure, figure one. <clears throat> the results of this consideration are one that all numbers are in their evolution reproduce the four first. So one, two, three, four equals ten equals one. Four, five, six, seven equals twenty eight, which equals ten, which each equals one. Or one could write one, two, three, one, four, five, six, one, etc. The reason this is all going to be figure four. All this shit that I just talked about is not figure four. <laughs> I'm putting leg locks on my notes. <laughs> it's going to be figure M. Uh, the results of this consideration are one that all numbers <laughs> figure four in their rev evolution uh, reproduce the four first. Two, that the last of these four first, the figure four leg lock represents the unity at a different octave. The sequence of numbers uh, may therefore be written this way. And this is all going to be figure N. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's just like the old Sesame Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <clears throat> we may notice that four, seven, uh, oh, okay, so it's a, it, it's in, it's in a grid. It goes, the first row is one, two, three. The second row is four, five, six. The third row is seven, eight, nine, etc. Just go download the thing, look at the notes. <clears throat> we may notice that four, seven, ten, thirteen, sixteen, nineteen, etc., are only different conceptions of this unity, and this may be provided by the application of the theosophic addition and reduction. Thus, 1 equals 1, 4 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10 equals 1. 7 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 equals 28 equals 10 equals 1. 10 equals 1. 13 <clears throat> equals 4 equals 10 equals 1. 16 equals 7 equals 28 equals 10 equals 1. 19 equals 10 equals 1, etc., etc., etc. This will be figure O. We see that every three numbers in the series revolt, reverts to the, un, the, un, the unity abruptly, whilst it returns to the progressive in the two in, intermediate numbers. <clears throat> Let us repeat that the knowledge of the laws of numbers and the study of them made, as we have here indicated, will give us the key to all occult science. We must <clears throat> now sum up all of the preceding statements in the following conclusion, that all numbers may be reduced to a final analysis, to a series of the first four, thus arranged, one, two, three, four. The signification of, the signification of these numbers but our knowledge of the numerical science of the ancients does not end here. It also attributed to the meaning of each number. Since we have reduced the series of all these numbers to the four first, it will suffice us uh, for us to know the meaning attributed to the four first. The unity present, represents the creative principle of all numbers, since the other numbers emanate from it. It is the active principle preeminent. But the unity alone cannot produce anything except by opposing itself to itself, thus one divided by one. 
from this proceeds duality. The principle of opposition represented by two, the passive principle preeminent. From the union of the unity and duality proceeds the third principle, which unites the two opposites in a common neutrality. One plus two equals three. Three is the neuter principle, preeminent. But these three principles all reduce themselves into the fourth, which merely represents the new exception of the, the new acceptation of the unity as an active principle. The law of these principles is therefore as follows. Unity or return to unity. Active one, active four. <clears throat> opposition and antagonism, passive two, etc. The action of opposition upon the unity, neuter three. And then there's a graphic here. With the active one, the passive two, the neuter three, the passive four. Kind of in a circle, like we would see Yod, Hey, Vo, Hey. And that will be, uh, this will all be figure P in the notes. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, chapter four, we're just going to do this real quick before we take off. Um, is the analogy between the sacred word and numbers. The Kabbalistic word in the series of numbers, explanations of the teratacts of Pythagoras, figurations, and the general law. Numbers in the Kabbalistic word. This sequence of numbers, one, two, three, and four, representing one, two, three, four, representing the act. <laughs> representing the active and passive and neuter and a second active principle corresponds in all points of the series of the letter of the sacred name so that the latter may be written as thus yod hey vo second hey equals yod etc <clears throat> while demonstrates analogically that one yod, two hey, three vo, four the second hey. Hey, hey, hey. We can provide or we can prove the truth of these analogies by the identity of the action of the number four, which becomes a unity. Four equals ten equals one. And of the second hey, which re represents the yod of the following sequence. In comparing the two identical series, we obtain the following figures. <clears throat> all right, there's a series of uh, graphics here. And these are all, there's five, four of them. And they're all going to be figure Q. <clears throat> the Kabbalistic sequence is yod, hey, vo, hey. It's kind of walking it around, like think of each letter on a point of a cross. So Yod is at the head of the cross, and then it works away, it works its way counterclockwise. Yod, hey, vo, hey. The sequence of numbers is one at the north, two at the west, if you're going to think of it that way, four at Well, he, hold on, wait, this is, this one's different. It's one at the north, two at the west, three at the east, and four at the south. Identity of the two sequences, Yod at the top. First, hey, at the east, vow at the south, and then the second, hey, at the east. So all these will be will be in the the thing. They're all under. I think I said Q. We can now understand why Pythagoras initi initiated in Egypt into the mysteries of the sacred word Yod Hey Vo Hey. Replaced this word in his esoteric teachings by the sequence of the four first numbers of the Trectix Tetra Six. I'm unfamiliar with this word. Tetra, tetra six, tetra six, six. <clears throat> the sequence of numbers is in all points identical with the sequence of the letters of the sacred name of the tetra six of Pythagoras. One, two, three, four. 
<clears throat> the uh, it, <laughs> it equals and absolutely represents the word yod hey vo hey the sequence of the numbers the sentence of letters therefore resolve revolves around it definitely into the following data one term positive and generator yod or one term negative or generate hey or two Term neuter or generated proceeding from the two proceeding, vo or three. Term transition individualizing itself into the following sequence, the two, the second hey or four. Provided with the preliminary data, we are absolutely indispensable. Uh, let us know. Let us now take our pack of cards or our tarot and see if we cannot find the universal law within it. And then we have figure four, which is Yod Hey Vo Hey again in this same thing, symbolized through the antiquity by the cross. So that's this is a great place to just go ahead and stop for the evening. There's a lot of figures in here, so I um, hope you guys will uh, sign into the, the newsletter to get this link. <clears throat> What else do I got to tell you? Oh, rate and review on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. Rate and review on iTunes. Check out the website, stigmatastudios.com or the abercast.com. I already mentioned the mailing list. And then I'd like to also encourage everyone to check out, uh, to go to the Patreon page and check out the not only the tier rewards, but also the exclusive content. Like I said, 13 like episodes within the last just three months. Um, up there for you guys. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to get this Patreon stuff off the ground. So I appreciate all your consider, your fine consideration. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate what, why, why was I, why'd I keep laughing with one, two, three, four? I don't know. If I, just in the back of my mind, I just kept hearing, uh, Springsteen, you know, we were born, we were born to run, you know, one, two, three, four, the highways jammed with broken heroes on a last chance power drive. Everybody's out on the run, but there's no place left to hide together. Wendy, we will leave with the sadness. I can't remember how it goes after that. You know what I'm talking about? In my darling whiskey, she tightened up her grip And she made me sick that night I knew that the whiskey would take up my life Well, I stand a fool two inches below five foot nine And every guy here wants to take me alive So I'll take a shot of whiskey and punch out their lines The whiskey, it make me want Shout.